be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Part of the Sezzarel, a revered term in Italian football that is used only for those teams that defined an era. Parma Calcio are part of this group of teams that made Italian football one of the prized jewels of European football for decades. Like today, in order to prove their credentials, players have to play in either the Premier League or La Liga. The best players on the planet tested themselves in Italy at a time when the Scudetto was an open race with at least three to four teams vying for the Scudetto. This was the level that Parma aspired to be in. It all started in 1961, when a young entrepreneur took a small company to lofty heights of global dominance. Callisto Tanzi acquired Parma in 1991. However, before Tanzi arrived with his wealth, a certain Nevio Scala took the reins of the club from Emilia Romagna. Previous owner, Ernesto Serencini, tested the waters by bringing in Origo Saki and then Stenic Zeman, and then decided to bring in a slightly more traditionalist, albeit innovative, tactician, who had only recently guided Regina very close to Serie A promotion. Parma were a team that were used to playing in the lower echelons of Italian football. Aducali were never meant for greatness, but in 1990, Scala guided them to promotion to top-flight Italian football against all odds. By then, the club's ownership had changed, with Tanze becoming the majority shareholder and bringing with him the sort of wealth that would change everything for the club. Legendary Brazilian goalkeeper Claudio Tafarel arrived. Looking to shore up the defence, Massimo Susic and Lorenzo Minotti were signed with the wily tactician opting for a 5-3-2 formation. In their first ever season at the top, Palmer gave a good account of their credentials as a team on the rise. They ended up finishing sixth in the league standings and thus earned qualification to the UEFA Cup. The season was a memorable one, with the newly promoted Emilians registering wins over the likes of Napoli, Roma, Milan and even Fiorentina. Alessandro Melli was their top scorer with 13 goals. And Marco Osio's creativity saw him score six goals, while dictating terms in the middle of the park. Sandro Melli never again reached 13 goals in Serie A in a single season, with physical problems holding back his talents. Gambaro left for AC Milan to play the role of backup in two seasons under Fabio Capello. Belliglone and Ikiari stayed on for the next season. They finished seventh in the league that season, crashed out in the round of 32 of the UEFA Cup. However, the first trophy in the history of the club was around the corner. The Coppa Italia. This was a time when the competition was decided over the course of two legs. Juventus won the first leg at Stadio degli Epi, thanks to a Roberto Baggio penalty. However, Palmer had other ideas in the second leg at the Stadio Ennio Tardeni in front of a crowd of 25,000. Melli gave the home side a lead to make it 1-1 before Osio scored in the second half to ensure Palmer of their first ever piece of domestic silverware. Scala and co. looked towards the 1992-93 campaign, hoping to build on their success. With the signing of Faustina Espria, Palmer had another proven goalscorer who would help the team go further in their quest for Champions League football. Scala's men finished third in the league standings, nine points behind champions Milan. They also boasted the second-best defence in Serie A, which conceded only 34 goals. In the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup, Palmer were a force to be reckoned with. They reached the final of the competition after edging out Atletico Madrid on away goals. The final took place at the Wembley Stadium against Royal Antwerp of Belgium. Scala's men won the game 3-1, with Menotti, Mele and Corky scoring a goal each. This was Palmer's first ever European triumph, and it became clear that under Scala, this team had just risen from the ashes and would be a great representative of Italian football in the continental competitions. 
the summer of 1993, saw Palmer make moves for Gianfranco Zola and Massimo Grippa for a combined fee of £9 million from Napoli. Zola would eventually become one of the biggest stars in the team before joining Chelsea. However, Grippa was equally important for his new team, scoring the winning goal as Palmer went on to beat AC Milan to win the European Super Cup. Zola would score 18 goals in the Serie A as Palmer finished in fifth place in the league standings. Scala's men also reached the final of the Cup Winners' Cup, where they lost to Arsenal in a game that could have gone either way. The summer of 1994 was going to be a big one for Palmer. Scala was able to convince Dino Baggio to leave Juventus, while Fernando Cotu signed from FC Porto. The departure of Alessandro Meni to Sampdoria was compensated by the arrival of Marco Branco from Udinese. Scala's men would finish third in the league standings, and they also lost the Coppa Italia final to Juventus 3-0 on aggregate. However, the Emilia Romagna giants were able to exact revenge on the old lady, managing to beat them 2-1 on aggregate to lift the second UEFA Cup title in 1995. Ironically, the final was played at the Stadio degli Alpi and it was Baggio who scored the winning goal against his former employers. The summer of 1995 saw the team make moves for Barcelona star Risto Stoichkov, Fabio Cannavaro and Filippo Ingazzi. This was the season that would see the phenomenal rise of Gigi Buffon, who was promoted to the senior side during the summer at the age of 17. In the opening game of the season against Milan, Buffon would defy the likes of Roberto Baggio and George Weir, as Nevio Scala's men held Milan to a goalless draw. Unfortunately, despite boasting some of the most talented players in the league, Parma were very inconsistent and finished sixth in the league standings. They also crashed out of the UEFA Cup at the hands of PSG and lost the Super Cup Italiana to Juventus. That season was to be Scala's last as the club's manager. It was a rather quiet end to what was a legendary tenure, and Scala would go on to unsuccessfully help Perugia escape relegation. In 1997, he moved to Germany to manage Borussia Dortmund and help them lift the Intercontinental Cup. After leaving the Germans in 1998, Scala decided to take a break from the game, and two years later, he managed Besiktas for a couple of seasons, before moving to Shakhtar Donetsk in 2002. His arrival saw the Ukrainian Giants win the league and the domestic cup. But in 2004, the veteran tactician was on his way again, this time to Russian Giants Spartak Moscow. Scala has not managed a football club since then, and even though rumours have surfaced linking him with the likes of Motherwell and AC Roma over the years, the veteran tactician continues to stay close to his beloved Palmer. Scala became the chairman of Palmer after the original club was declared insolvent due to financial issues. In the list of Italian managers who achieved glory at clubs that were not even supposed to threaten the established order, Scala's name is the most prominent one. He arrived at a club that had never before in its history reached for the stars, and helped by an owner who was willing to spend enormous sums. Scala made the small city of Parma home to one of the most successful sides in Serie A and European football at that time. <laughs>